is my pedal board. Mm. It is way too big. And I'm probably overcompensating for my... Now, as much as I've been poring over Tomo Fujita's YouTube guitar page lately, where he espouses the value of plugging right into your amp, using no reverb, and just working on the clarity of your notes, I still am and kinda always will be a pedal guy. The thing is, if you play in a band where the specific tones and sounds of the songs are kind of hinging upon your pedal board, you need an amp that can get the job done. I had a 68 Fender Drip Edge Deluxe, and in the right context, that amp was killer. And I spent a lot of time and a lot of energy on the tubes, the biasing, swapping out speakers. The second my band was playing on a bigger stage, like a House of Blues or a festival outside stage, if I needed to get my sound, the volume up, and still kind of have clarity in delay or a modulation or a reverb. The thing is I couldn't get the headroom of the amp loud enough so that the effects would stay clean. They would hit the front end of the, of the power tubes and just get muddy and thubby and tubby. The thing with regular amps, uh, in particular Fender amps, is they sound really good at a certain spot and that's why there's you know the Champ, the Princeton, the Deluxe, the Vibrolux. And if you've got a ton of money, you can have whatever amp you need for whatever stage, and you can bring every amp that you own to every venue if you're Mark Knopfler or Neil Young. But the cool thing about the Tone Master is the way I have it set, and I've played three gigs with it and made some videos with it, I now have found what I deem to be the sweet spot of this digital recreation of a Fender Twin. And now I just adjust the attenuation on the back depending on the room. But this is a serious pedal platform amp. I think the limitation of the amp in this case, which is its digital nature, is also the benefit in terms of a pedal platform because you can adjust your output depending on the context and really dial in where uh, the front end of the amp you want your effects to hit. Because it's digital, you're not gonna get that sort of like smashing the front end, your delay and your modulation gets all janky and warbly and, and distorted in a bad way. Uh, the digital nature of the, uh, of the Tone Master means I think that like reverbs and modulations sound really, really good. If you are kind of into that thing, which I've always been looking for an amp that can do that sort of really good, clean edge of breakup thing, and then I use in particular various boosts to kind of push me over the edge. But I want to be able to do that, and then I want to be able to fall back on some really neat, interesting modulated reverbs, some really clean, pristine delays. The Tone Master is low key, I think one of the best pedal platform amps out on the market. Like it would be really cool to see kind of like a dry, wet, wet or a wet, dry or a stereo rig with, with these amps because the minute you've got a guitar that's good with good pickups and some overdrive or, you know, distortion pedals that you like and dialed into these amps, you can make verbs, modulations and delays really sing. The settings I've found that work the best for the Tone Master Twin Blonde, uh, five on the master volume, which is right kind of there. And if you put this thing on 85 watts in your house, it'll be way too much. Uh, five gets you right, at, right on the edge of breakup. I've got five on the treble, five on the middle. The digital bass is a little much, so I come down to three. It's kind of how Jerry Garcia set up his twin anyway. Uh, verb sounds good off or from three, four, five, whatever you want. Um, vibrato channel one, bright switch off. They've uh, taken out the bright switch cap on this blonde edition to make the high end sing a little better, but there you go. This amp is a killer pedal platform. Thanks for checking out the channel. My name is Jay Rutherford. Check out my other videos on the Tone Master Twin. Give a like, give a follow, stick around. More videos to come.